Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Trotman. I'm an infectious disease specialist at Cox Health in Springfield, Missouri. And today we're going to talk about uh, drug-resistant bacteria. The news media have picked up the recent description of these superbugs and nightmare bacteria, and so we're going to talk about what that means to you and what that means to our uh, environment and our community and our hospitals. So typically when we say the word superbugs, that's not a, a real medical term. That's a description for bacteria. So going forward, we're going to talk about bacteria that are resistant to multiple classes of antibiotics. These could be these superbugs could be staph infections that are resistant to lots of antibiotics. Typically when we talk about CRE, that's carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae. That's a big word, but that's usually describing these bacteria like E. coli. They're in that family. They're found in our intestinal tract and they're found in the environment and they're resistant to the carbapenem class of antibiotics and that's typically a class of antibiotics reserved as a last ditch type of drugs and so we lump them together as CRE. And what you may have seen, and then some of the other infections could be C. diff and there's even been some candida infections, tuberculosis, there's even completely resistant gonorrhea and tuberculosis in other parts of the world. So those are often lumped into the term superbug. Mm -hmm. What you may have seen in the recent news media was uh, were stories that were picked up from a CDC uh, paper published on the prevalence or the frequency of these superbugs in a large group of uh, uh, isolated bacteria that they studied and they actually showed there's good news in this publication that the news picked up one part of it but the good news is the incidence of these uh, superbug CRE infections are, have been going down over time since uh, we put in place specific measures to um, prevent transmission and, and try to reduce these infections. We've actually seen the numbers go down but what was found in this study was were a handful of these isolates, about 220 of these organisms that had a unique mechanism of action where about uh, the majority of these CRE germs are resistant to the carbapenem class with a, a defined set of mechanisms, genetic mechanisms, and this small group of bacteria have it yet to define how they're resistant. So that's why they were labeled as these nightmare bacteria. These are exceedingly rare infections. I can tell you in, in our community, these are fairly uh, rare to see these CRE infections. We do grow the organism in the lab from uh, cultures. Uh, we've, uh, at Cox Health, I can tell you last year, we grew this germ three times. So that's a, that's a fairly low prevalence of CRE. And for several years, we've had in place uh, uh, mechanisms to prevent the evolution of these uh, drug resistant germs and also ways to control them in the hospital. And the, uh, the Medicare and uh, the infection control uh, regulatory people have had in place mechanisms to uh, avoid developing these infections. This has been a predictable uh, occurrence. So Alexander Fleming in 1945 said, uh, the, when they first developed penicillin, they said this, uh, these infections are eventually going to be resistant to penicillin if we overuse these antibiotics, and that's what we've seen. The CDC estimates, estimates that about 23 people, 23,000 people per year in the United States uh, died from these infections. So it's not uncommon nationally. We'll see this organism maybe 2 million times. So superbug infections two million times in the United States per year. So that gives you a backdrop on the, on the uh, burden of disease. These are very expensive to treat. Um, they estimate that the total cost is $20 billion to treat these uh, multiple drug resistant infections. What, what you can do and what we can do as healthcare providers is, uh, is pretty well established. Um, at Cox Health, we've had a, uh, an antimicrobial stewardship program in place for about 10 years, and that's a systematic program that includes myself and a pharmacist and administrative support, where about we monitor the antibiotic utilization within our healthcare system to make sure we're using the right drugs for the right duration, not inappropriately using antibiotics, to make sure that the infections are appropriately treated, so we screen culture results. and myself or a pharmacist review those and make sure patients are being uh, appropriately treated. And then we keep track of uh, trends, so national trends, to make sure that um, we're on top of these before they hit our community. This is, a, this is actually a national mandate, so uh, Medicare requires that healthcare systems have in place antimicrobial stewardship programs. It's the law in Missouri, and uh, this all stems from 2014 
uh, President Obama put in place the uh, National Action Plan to combat drug-resistant infections. And so from that, Medicare uh, or CMS and uh, Department of Health picked this up. And so that's, that's how we um, are dealing with these uh, superbugs. What you can do for yourself is avoid unnecessary antibiotics. So that's a, that's a big key. If you're prescribed antibiotics from your doctor, make sure that you really need them. Uh, do you take the right drug? Do you take them for the right amount of time? You want to take them to completion. Uh, in your home and in your community, you want to do things like good hand hygiene. We don't want to spread uh, germs from one another. One of the th things that gives people some ease is that when we talk about these multi-drug resistant infections, oftentimes these organisms are grown in a culture and they may not represent invasive disease. So when your family member or your friend is in the hospital and you hear they have uh, a resistant uh, organism and maybe they're in isolation or maybe you're told that, you, uh, that they need special antibiotics, uh, not all of these infections are actually invasive disease. So we often grow these resistant organisms in cultures uh, that may mean, may represent what's called colonization. And so not every time that we grow these organisms are we specifically treating them. We only want to treat them, uh, treat these infections when absolutely necessary. So the takeaway from this is, uh, this is a global problem. Uh, it's a regional problem, these superbugs. Uh, we're not seeing high prevalence of this in our local area. There's things you can do. There's definitely things that we can do as, as healthcare providers. Uh, we have those actions in place. So when you read about superbugs, you, you probably shouldn't lose sleep yet. Um, the common superbugs that you might see, and people will classify infections like C. diff, that's a colon infection, that's a diarrhea that you get from antibiotic uh, exposure. MRSA, some of these germs, these are a little more common, um, but uh, you can do things to protect yourself, like hand hygiene, appropriately taking your antibiotics, so washing your hands, cooking your food, those are the things you can do to protect yourself. So thanks for tuning in and there will hopefully be more videos to come and we'll see you soon.